I am back on the road again, back in my van, happy as can be. I've had a lovely few days catching up with my family. It was my gorgeous little niece's birthday, so I um, had a lovely time with her. Helped my sister make a Peppa Pig birthday cake. Really proud of that. I'll uh, include a little picture because um, it was really good actually. So now I'm, um, I'm in my van and heading onwards to London get a bit more uh, city driving under my belt, see how we do doing this one. Or, um, I'm hoping I'll do a little bit better than Bristol because I feel like I really, um, really fucked up to be quite frank. I was <laughs> did not drive in the correct places and I've been a bit concerned that I may have like tickets for, you know, driving in the wrong lanes and going through lights and just generally being probably places I shouldn't have been because I was getting rather confused with all the directions and all of the lanes and all of the different rules and regulations there were to follow but hopefully we did all right so I'm on my way to London now I've got a few bands I've got a week of absolutely cracking music coming up um, Dinosaur Jr followed by Corey Taylor followed by The Streets so um, yeah pretty fucking fantastic if you ask me Got myself a nice um, nice little coffee on the go. So um, I've got probably like two, two and a half hours of driving, maybe three. You know, I've got to go on the M25. Could be a four hour journey. Who knows? Either way, I'm, um, I'm happy. I've got my tunes on. I've got my coffee. And um, yeah, I'm just going to gonna have a nice little ride. Um, just so, so, so nice to be back in my van. My, um, my little nephew, he's got a spare bed in his room, so he likes me sleeping in there and having little sleepovers with him, which is lovely because I get woken up in the morning with, with little tickles from my uh, niece and nephew. But it's, um, it's just I love my van, so it's, um, it's nice to be back in there and get warmed up again. It's been a bit, felt a bit chilly in there where I haven't been in there for a few days, so I've just been having the heater blow in and yeah, just getting, um, getting things sorted and. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to come back and spend a bit more time with my family once I've been in London because I've got a few bits to sort out of my van. It's got its MOT due, book it in for a service and I'm also getting a diesel heater fitted so I have a bit of a uh, bit of luxury there. And um, the good thing about being a trucker's daughter is I know lots of truckers and I know lots of like proper blokes, blokes that have got, you know, bloke skills and, um, you know, dirty hands. <laughs> so I've got um, a good group of people around me, good recommendations for garages to go to and people to see to get the help that I need. So um, I'm really blessed there. <clears throat> Excuse me, still trying to get rid of the last of this cough. It's nearly nearly gone, bloody cold. They, they seem to stick around a lot these days. But um, yeah, I'm getting shot at that. So so yeah, I've got a good good week in my van ahead. And then a good good bit of time after that to just sort of, yeah, sort a few bits out on her and get, get properly set for winter and my further adventures uh, further afield and in different countries. So I just want to make sure I've got my van spot on. So um. So yeah, just gonna um, get make sure she's trucking real good. Got a full tank of fuel just filled up. So um, yeah, and I got my coffee. So I'm gonna hit the road and get going with the journey. Little journey update. Just pulled onto the M25. So of course, stuck in traffic because you know it's the M25. Don't know. Um, don't know if ever, anything ever really moves on the M25 past like you know five miles an hour. But you know, I was prepped. I knew I knew I'd be joining the M25, and it's a Saturday. You know, even on weekends, this this motorway is just chocker. I don't know if it's ever really clear. Maybe like three in the morning. Maybe if you want to drive around the M25 with clear traffic, come in the middle of the night. Otherwise, you're going to be progressing very slowly. But the sun is shining. It's a beautiful day for driving. I've got some really good tunes pumping, had the new Streets album on, and also a band called Steak, which is a new band to me, but they were um, supporting a band that I saw the other day, and um, I thought they were bloody good, so I thought I'll check out their albums, as I've got a bit of a journey and a bit of traffic to be stuck in, so yeah, I'm really enjoying that, and um, having a good little time, I, um, I'm not somebody that gets stressed out in traffic, because I'm like, What's the point, you know? What's the point in getting stressed out into traffic, you know? You can't do anything about it. You're stuck in it. So enjoy it as a little bit of you time, you know? You can put on your favourite tunes. You can have a little party in your van. Yeah, enjoy yourself. So, um, so yeah, that's what I do. I just get my tunes pumping and um, have a little <laughs> little party for one. And it's, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. So next time you're stuck in traffic, enjoy it. You've got some nice time to be by yourself and... Um, yeah, have a little party if you want to. So I'm going to get my tunes back on. Get this party going again. 
I made it up in London. Pretty good journey, actually. Weather was good. A bit of traffic, but, you know, we're in London. There's always going to be traffic. Um, and, yeah, I found a good little space to um, to park for the night um, outside a church slash graveyard. tend to find that churches are a good place to stop. Um, quite quiet and peaceful, um, especially if there's a graveyard. Uh, the dead don't seem to bother you that much, and uh, neither do the living. <laughs> And uh, I think that's because a lot of people don't like graveyards where um, I don't mind them. I kind of quite find them quite peaceful places to be and a good place to contemplate life and death. So, yeah, quite a fan of the old graveyard. Um, so, yeah, it's um, a lovely sunny day up here. I came for a little stroll after my journey and I'm just sat on a nice sunny park bench just catching catching some rays and stretching my legs after the journey. So, yeah, just going to have a little wander maybe find somewhere for a for a nice cup of coffee or something or um head back to my van as I do have nice coffee in there and um yeah and just get all uh, all comfy for the evening I've got a couple of radio shows to record so I'm gonna do that and um yeah and just get um just get comfy for the night and um enjoy um enjoy being up in the big city I'm back in my van after uh, having a nice little walk about I'm just uh, prepping myself some potatoes there for a bit of dinner, and I've just been moving uh, moving a bit of furniture. <laughs> well, you know, not not really a lot of furniture. I'm in my van, but my little uh, little stool down there, which was over here behind my trike, I've moved, and my suitcase, which was where my stool is now, is there. So I've got a bit more floor room just so I can do a bit of stretching and a bit of yoga in the morning. So I'll just sort of see how that works out. I've also got myself this like selfie stick, which I'm currently using. I'll be honest, I feel like a massive twat. Um, <laughs> honestly, people that I see using selfie sticks, I've always judged so 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 harshly, um, and I do myself now. <laughs> so I don't know if it's something that I'll continue using, but you know, in the quest for perhaps giving you a bit of a better quality, you know, watching experience, I thought I'd give it a go. So um, I hope you appreciate that. Because, uh, yeah, seriously, I feel like a massive twat and nobody's even looking at me right now. I'm in the privacy of my van, but I don't know. See, look, you can you can get, get a bit more perspective, maybe. Maybe that works good. I don't know. don't know if I'm actually going to stick to using it because, like I said, um, yeah, I don't know. Just not... Uh, <laughs> I like doing these videos, but it's just such... It's hard, isn't it? Because then you've got to look like one of those twats doing videos with your phones. But there we go. Uh, price you pay, I suppose, to... Uh, make videos and put them on youtube <laughs> you just gotta look like a bit of a knobhead but um yeah hopefully not looking too much of a knobhead anyway so uh right i'm gonna get on with prepping my spuds for dinner and i'm gonna get the kettle on because i really want a cup of tea i'm just starting to get a um bit of dinner prepped and i also needed some water so what i usually do when um my big water uh, tank is really full it's really heavy so the easiest thing for me to do is just tip it over put it over the side of my sliding door and then what I'll do is I'll fill up my kettle and numerous water bottles and then I've just got those there for the evening which means I don't have to try and um, position my water tank inside and fill up <clears throat> bottles and kettles and it also means as well if I did have any like leaks with that I don't have to worry about it going all over my floor so I always feel safest just filling up water bottles just at the side of my van and now that I've filled up all of those bottles and my kettle, I should have uh, quite a bit of water for a couple of days or so. But you do get through a lot of water um, with drinking and cooking, and it's really important to stay hydrated. So I tend to um, fill up on water wherever I am. Even um, if I've got like a pretty full tank, even if my water tank's like three quarters full, if I've got the opportunity to fill it up, I'll fill it right to the top. And the same with like my water bottles, if I can run in somewhere if I'm at a friend's house or even like a cafe I'll just fill up a couple of water bottles because um, it's surprising how quick you will get free water and the same with showering actually um, I didn't particularly need a shower this morning I was quite clean from swimming in that yesterday but because I knew it's going to be perhaps a few days before I have another one I thought I'll make the most of having a shower so when you get the opportunity to clean yourself and fill up water take it because you never know when uh, when the op next opportunity might arise so yeah make the most of getting clean and getting water on board i've got one of my favorite dinners tonight spuds sprouts and salmon absolutely love it i'm just going to um 
fry it all up. I've got some potatoes already cooked and some sliced up sprout and a little packet of already cooked salmon. I've also got this um, nice bundle of herbs. It smells absolutely lovely from Sainsbury's. And it's called a roasting herb mix. So it's got thyme, sage and rosemary. Um, I was just going to get rosemary because I used to drink a lot of fresh um, ginger and rosemary tea. Um, I hadn't been doing it for a while and then I was speaking to a friend the other day and he was like telling me that he'd been well into the rosemary and drinking a lot of rosemary tea so I was like oh I've got to get back into that um, so so yeah I'm going to use the rosemary for a fresh rosemary and ginger tea and it's, it's really good you literally just slice up some fresh ginger root put in a sprig of rosemary it's absolutely delicious you can always add um, a slice of lemon as well um, actually sage and lemon tea is really nice just a slice of lemon a few bits of sage it's really lovely um, when I used to have my own garden with lots of like fresh herbs growing in it, I'd make what I'd call garden tea, where I'd take my cafetiere, obviously usually used for coffee, um, and I'd go around my garden and collect different herbs and flowers and leaves, put it in it, fill it up with boiling water, let it steep for a while and then drink that and it was just amazing. And it'd be different every time depending on what herbs were available and depending on what I wanted or needed. Um, so I had a lot of like fresh rosemary, uh, lavender, thyme and sage and also um, dandelion leaf and flowers are uh, edible so I'd put those in and the dandelion flowers would look lovely because obviously they're bright yellow so they just always look really lovely in the pot. Um, and raspberry leaf as well and blackberry leaf are also edible and again they've just got a lot of goodness in them um, so I'd put, put those in. Same with them, um, like rose petals. So there's quite a lot of plants that are edible and really good for you. So they're just really good for like making fresh teas with. And um, I'm not a massive fan of herbal teas as much as I like only drink herbal teas. I find like the ready sort of like made ones. A lot of time they smell good, but they taste like nothing really. Um, so uh, as much as I don't, I don't drink normal tea, I don't drink any sort of like normal builders brew anymore. It tends to just be chamomile and red bush if it's in a tea bag. But when it comes to like the fresh teas, I'll drink, I'll drink them all day long. Um, same with like, I'm not a big fan of like mint tea from the tea bag, but a fresh mint tea is absolutely lovely. Um, same with lemon balm. That's a lovely one to do a, a fresh tea with. Um, so yeah, there's just it's just night and day the fresh herbs, um, fresh herb teas as opposed to like the herbal teas from tea bags. Um, so yeah, I really really like these. Oh, it smells just so good, fresh herbs you just can't beat them. So yeah, I'm just gonna crack on with um, with making a bit of dinner. I'm gonna use some of this thyme actually in my salmon spuds and sprouts. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And I find as well, I, I do love being back in my van after, you know, spending time with sort of friends or family or other people. Because it's just nice to be back, one, in your own sort of space and energy, but just eating your own food that you're used to as well. Like my tummy's just been really craving, well, this dinner really, just some salmon, and some spuds and some sprouts. Um, I do like to keep things simple at times, just, um, yeah, I just, just quite like things, quite things simple. Um, I just find it does my sort of guts a bit better. Sometimes I just feel like um, if I've got too many like ingredients going on, my tummy just doesn't really know what to do with it all. So yeah, I've got um, got my sprouts and my spuds sizzling away. I'll add my salmon and my fresh thyme um, once they've cooked a little bit because fish is already cooked. So that'll just need like a minute to just warm through a little bit. So yeah, I'm just sat here drinking my lovely ginger kombucha. Because you know I love this shit. It's so good. Yeah, good for my um, good for my little tummy as well. All those uh, probiotics or whatever it is that's in it that's good for you. Same with the oily fish. I do like to have like a good bit of oily fish every week, really. Um, a few times a week, just because um. I just really like it, you know, as much as I do, do love my steak and my meat, I'm big on fish as well, especially oily fish. So, yeah, I tend to, um, yeah, make sure I have that quite a bit. 
I um I did take omega-3 like supplements for a while um, just because I got dodgy joints but to be honest I just sort of thought if I'm eating fish I'll just eat the fish you know so I'm just just doing that I um I ended up moving my table back I don't know if you can see it behind me but um yeah I didn't like it there over there <laughs> I was like no I want it back over there so if I want to do some stretching I'll just pick it up out of the way um, but I have set, kept my suitcase here, um, yeah, just because I'm just going to try having that there because it kept sort of falling over a lot when I was driving when it was over there. Um, whereas with it being this side, I've got a little um, place where I can hook a bungee strap in. So I've just done that. I've just got it uh, bungee around it. So I'm hoping that will stop it falling over and it might give me a bit more space over there. Might perhaps put a couple of like shelves in or something or put another plastic box there. Just trying to, um, you know, the more you live in a space, the more you can get a feel for it and just sort of see what works where and what you need really. There's my potatoes and my spuds. Just cooking away, lovely. And yeah, that's my little space where my... Uh, suitcase was now holding my bongos and my little base amp and the case for my cooker and it's where i stow my stow my uh, cooker when i'm driving and then over here i've got my suitcase with the bungee around it my restocked water and my little table or stool really and i've got my candles there and just use it for um yeah for putting my cup of tea on of an evening when i'm when i'm set up in bed my um my granddad actually made this stool. He was a welder, um. So that's why I've got it with me. It's quite it's quite heavy to be honest. Big metal stool, but he made it, and um I just like like having it. So um so yeah, that's why it's with me, and it acts as a nice little table, really more than anything. Oh, I got my salmon and my herbs in now. It's really not far away from being cooked now, which is good because I got a little rumble on. There we go, dinner is ready. Smells bloody good, I tell you. And um just so simple as well, like what's that? Five ingredients? We got sprouts, spuds, salmon, bit of thyme, bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, six, seasoning. Um but obviously you don't have to have the seasoning, you don't even have to have the thyme. You can just have the um, you know, salmon, spuds and sprouts and a little oil or something to cook it in. But um yeah, oh, that is just, oh, I can't wait to eat this. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's lovely. I mean, if you got it, you could even, like, squeeze a little lemon on that. But, you know, it doesn't need, necessarily need it. There's this actually really nice um uh, type of thyme that you can get that's called lemon thyme. And it's um obviously it's related to the thyme plant, but it's just like got a lemony like aroma to it. It's really nice. And um when I'm having um fish, I tend to leave the skin on if I can. Um obviously if it's really scaly, you know, don't eat it. But um if it's not, I tend to eat it just because there's a lot of goodness in it. It's a bit like with vegetables, you know, the skin's the place where you've got a lot of goodness going on and a lot of fibre. So same with fish, it's just a lot of goodness in there. So yeah, just sort of chow it all down. <laughs> well, that was absolutely banging. <laughs> Loved every mouthful of that. It was so good. It felt so nourishing as well. It's really, really just what I needed. So I'm just going to finish the rest of my kombucha, sit up in bed, do a bit of crochet, just listening to something. And um, yeah, just have myself a nice little chilled evening. I think it's 20 past seven. Uh, Pardon me. Just finished my dinner. After dinner burp. Um, so yeah. It was a bloody good dinner. <laughs> um, just a little quick um, comment really on how I clean up after dinner. It's mainly with kitchen roll and some anti-back wipes. Um, I love using this like cast iron like skillet pan. Um, just especially where I cook like in oil and stuff. I can just wipe around with a bit of kitchen roll and um it's clean you know i mean obviously it's not as clean as if you were washing it up washing it up 
um but a lot of pans like this is good to like not like wash them and submerge them in water you like a oh, what is it called it's like you season the pan with oil or some i don't know what the word is i think it's that um but yeah i tend to just sort of do that give it a wipe around um sometimes if i am near like a sink or I'll properly wash stuff up and I have got a washing up bowl as well so I can boil water and give stuff a proper wash but to be honest most of the time I feel like you can get a pretty good job done with kitchen roll and an anti-pack wipe so yeah that's that's what I do and <laughs> I seem to be doing all right